I'm actually an accidental public speaker, mm -hmm. meaning I never sought to be specifically a public speaker. I started out building a business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have heard of it. It's called Sleep Country USA. And in the early days of my business, having started with only $5,000, I did not have the money to hire professional on-air talent. So I did my own radio and television commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and later I realized when you're letting a, an individual walk around with the reputation of, their, of your business in their hands, it's probably better if you do that yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. So I did my own radio and television ads, which a, kind of created a bit of a local celebrity persona as a, as a result of this. People would stop me in the grocery store and places I would go, and, and that was all fine. But then also Chamber of Commerces and Rotary Clubs and, and all sorts of business groups mm -hmm. would contact me and say, hey, would you come speak at our group? Mm -hmm. I guess the presumption was if you can do 30 seconds, you can do 30 <laughs> minutes. And I don't know where anybody comes to that conclusion, but that was the presumption. And I, I got the first invitation. I thought, oh my goodness, if I go in there and talk about, you know, selling mattresses, everyone will be asleep in the first five minutes. Well, that's what you want, selling mattresses. Well, right? that's what I was doing, I mean, <laughs> essentially. So I said, well, what do I have that every business person has in common? And we had just been voted a best place to work. And that is done by a blind survey of your staff. And so I said, you know, I bet other business people would be surprised at what simple things actually got mentioned on people's surveys. Mm -hmm. So I started out talking about employee motivation because it's something no matter what your business, we have that in common. Chances are you have some employees, even if they're not on your payroll, who you have to motivate. Mm -hmm. They can be contract workers, they can be people at your vendors who you need cooperation from. So this was a common topic that I could talk about. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, you know, I accepted a lot of those invitations simply because it was a kind of a backdoor way to market your business, mm -hmm. even though I didn't talk about our products or mm -hmm. when you start talking about your philosophy of how you do business and people want to do business with, with businesses they identify with and, and respect. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, we actually could track mm -hmm. specific increases in business based on where I had appeared to speak. Mm -hmm. So if I spoke up in Everett, the Everett store and the Linwood store would see an increase, a, a measurable increase over the next mm -hmm. 90 days. Mm -hmm. So we said, oh, this is a genius marketing play and we didn't even know about it. So I started accepting as many of those invitations as I possibly could because again, you're spending a lot of money advertising mm -hmm. when you really have a chance to one-on-one -on -one connect with people. It's a whole different kind of yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. And then I assumed once I sold my business and retired that people would quit calling and would quit asking. And what I learned was I actually got to be a very good public speaker in the process and they never quit calling. And to this day, people still go to my website on a regular basis and fill out the little online form which comes to me in an email. I check my calendar and I'm all over speaking to all sorts of business groups even to this day.